Hello, I'm Dr. Laura Brown. I'm a neonatologist and associate professor of pediatrics at the University of Colorado School of Medicine and Children's Hospital Colorado. Today, I will be discussing inositol, a non-glucose carbohydrate found in human breast milk. What is inositol? Inositol is a naturally occurring six carbon sugar alcohol found in mammalian tissues. It is formed through the reduction of glucose through the polyol pathway. Myo-inositol is the most predominant stereoisomer found in biological tissues. It is an essential nutrient for the growth and survival of all cells. Inositol is found in relatively high concentrations in human milk to the order of 1,200 micromoles per liter. It is the carbohydrate with the third highest concentration uh, with lactose and free glucose having the highest concentrations in human milk. Inositol plays a critical nutritional role in fetal development as well as for the health of the neonate. The fetus and or placenta are able to produce inositol endogenously from glucose. How is inositol critical for fetal and neonatal development? Inositol has several biological functions. It regulates cell osmolality, it's, an, it's essential for phosphoinositide-mediated cell signaling and glycoprotein formation. It's an important component of phospholipid production in surfactants in the form of phosphatidylinositol. It's essential for the formation of the neural system. And interestingly, it's found in especially high concentrations in tissues with cells that do not divide rapidly, such as the central nervous system, skeletal muscle, and cardiac muscle. What role does inositol play in fetal and neonatal development? And why is inositol important in breast milk? Inositol concentrations are elevated during embryonic and fetal life and decline postnatally, such that plasma concentrations in preterm neonates are higher than in term neonates, and plasma concentrations of inositol in term neonates are higher than in the adult. It is an important precursor for membrane phospholipids and is of particular significance in the formation of the neural system and for surfactant production in the lung. Studies in human pregnancies have suggested endogenous production of inositol by the fetus. This was shown in studies that measured inositol concentrations in the maternal plasma compared to umbilical cord arterial and venous concentrations. And this study found that inositol concentrations were highest in the fetal umbilical artery. A second study used stable isotope tracers of inositol that were infused into the maternal circulation. And by sampling umbilical cord blood, uh, it was shown again that the fetus was a producer of inositol. Additional studies using stable isotope tracers demonstrated that in late preterm and term neonates, uh, they were able in the first few days of life to produce inositol endogenously at rates that exceeded what the intake would be from human milk. Despite endogenous inositol production by the fetus and neonate, there is a relatively high concentration of inositol in human milk, with the highest concentration being in preterm human milk compared to term human milk. Inositol concentrations in preterm and term neonates depend on inositol in the diet. What are some causes of insufficient levels of inositol in the fetus and or neonate? At birth, inositol concentrations are higher in preterm infants compared to term infants. 
after birth, the concentrations of inositol are influenced by nutritional intake. Inositol is present in human milk and is supplemented in preterm formulas and to a lesser extent in term formulas. Inositol is not present in parenteral nutrition. Therefore, preterm infants who are unable to receive human milk and or preterm formula and do not endogenously produce adequate amounts of inositol are at risk of becoming deficient. Reduced maternal inositol concentrations have been associated with increased incidence of spina bifida in the fetus during pregnancy. And there's also some limited evidence that placental insufficiency and intrauterine growth restriction may result in increased fetal inositol concentrations compared to a normally grown fetus or neonate. Markedly increased concentrations of inositol were found in the plasma of a fetal sheep model of placental insufficiency in IUGR. And likewise, high inositol concentrations have been demonstrated in the urine of human IUGR neonates. The significance of higher than normal inositol concentrations in this condition uh, has yet to be determined. What cohort is most affected by low inositol levels? Preterm infants who are not receiving enteral intake of inositol and are unable to produce inositol endogenously are at risk for deficiency. Those neonates with respiratory distress syndrome may have low inositol concentrations, as infants with low inositol concentrations uh, had a higher incidence and severity of respiratory distress syndrome. Preterm infants with low inositol concentrations are also at risk for retinopathy of prematurity. What are some ramifications that can occur as a result of insufficient inositol levels in preterm infants? Insufficient inositol levels can result in respiratory distress syndrome in preterm infants that's more severe and can also uh, result in a potential increase in the, in the incidence of retinopathy of prematurity, which can result in loss of vision and blindness. In what form is inositol provided to preterm neonates and infants? Inositol is found in human milk with the highest concentration found in human preterm milk. Inositol is added to preterm formulas at about 40 milligrams per 100 calories and to a lesser extent in term formulas at 5 milligrams per 100 calories. This is in reference to the content of inositol in human preterm milk, which is about 22 milligrams per 100 calories. Inositol is not typically included in standard IV parenteral nutrition. IV and enteral supplementation of inositol have been used in previous randomized controlled trials. How is inositol delivered to preterm infants and what is its effect? Inositol is present in human milk and is supplemented to preterm and to a lesser extent term formula. This models what has been measured in human milk. Concentrations are higher in preterm human milk than they are in term human milk. Inositol supplements to preterm infants have been used in research protocols only. It can be given either intravenously or enterally. Inositol supplementation increases plasma concentrations of inositol in preterm infants. It also increases the amount of saturated phosphatidylcholine in surfactant in newborns. Randomized controlled trials of inositol supplementation for preterm infants born less than 32 weeks gestation were done in the 1980s and 1990s by Hallman and Friedman. 
Results were summarized in a 2015 Cochrane Review written by Howlett et al. Results showed that in preterm infants who were supplemented with inositol, there was reduced neonatal mortality, reduced incidence and severity of respiratory distress syndrome, reduced incidence of severe intraventricular hemorrhage or grade two intraventricular hemorrhage or higher. There was markedly decreased incidence and severity of retinopathy of prematurity and inositol supplementation in preterm infants was not associated with any serious adverse events. Phelps et al. more recently performed a pharmacokinetic study in preterm infants less than 29 weeks gestation, evaluating the effects of either 10, 40, or 80 milligrams per kilogram per day of supplemented myo-inositol compared to placebo. Results demonstrated that increased plasma inositol concentrations were observed two weeks after initiation in the supplemented groups compared to placebo, though by six weeks, all groups converged uh, at about the same concentration. Concurrent increased concentrations of inositol in the urine were found, though this was not associated with an osmotic diuresis. The half-life of inositol was found to be about eight hours. Adverse events were common in this group of extremely preterm infants. However, fewer adverse effects were found in the inositol supplementation groups, though this was not statistically significant. Why is it important to provide inositol to preterm infants? Our research group showed that the utilization rate of inositol by late preterm and term neonates greater than 34 weeks gestation were higher than the rate that would have been obtained by a ingestion of inositol in human milk, suggesting that inositol must be synthesized endogenously in significant quantities in order to meet the daily requirement by the infant. However, whether extremely preterm infants are able to synthesize inositol endogenously in order to meet requirements has not been studied. However, in the four randomized controlled trials that studied inositol supplementation in preterm infants would suggest that an extremely preterm infant is at risk of becoming deficient. These studies showed that inositol supplementation to preterm infants less than 32 weeks gestation resulted in reduced neonatal mortality, reduced incidence of uh, respiratory distress syndrome, reduced incidence of severe intraventricular hemorrhage, and markedly decreased incidence and severity of retinopathy of prematurity. These studies showed inositol did not have any serious adverse events. It's very important to remember that inositol is present in human milk and it is in highest concentration in preterm human milk and it's supplemented in preterm formulas. However, it is not present in standard intravenous parenteral nutrition formulations. There is also some evidence that inositol supplementation in pregnant women may decrease the incidence of neural tube defects. Why is there a need for more research on inositol and its role in neonatal nutrition? In clinical practice, inositol concentrations are not measured routinely. Thus, we do not know the true magnitude of infants that have inositol deficiency. There is an ongoing multi-center randomized controlled trial entitled Inositol to Reduce Retinopathy of Prematurity in the United States. This study is designed to follow up on previous smaller randomized controlled trials that showed a very promising effect of inositol supplementation in preterm infants on morbidities such as retinopathy of prematurity. Interestingly, there is some evidence of increased inositol concentrations in the plasma and urine of IUGR infants, though the significance of this is not understood.
It is hypothesized that elevated inositol concentrations could play a role in later life insulin resistance as well as the risk for metabolic disease in adulthood. Animal studies strongly suggest a potential role for, ins uh, for inositol to prevent neural tube defects. Rodent embryos develop neural tube defects when they're cultured in inositol deficient media. Inositol also prevented neural tube defects in a genetic mouse model that is predisposed to develop neural tube defects. A pilot study that randomized women with a previous neural tube defect pregnancy to folic acid supplementation, which is the standard of care, plus or minus inositol supplementation. Though this was a very small study, the results showed promise that a combination of folic acid and inositol supplementation started prior to pregnancy might decrease the incidence of neural tube defects. There were no adverse events associated with maternal inositol supplementation. The results encourage a larger scale randomized controlled trial of inositol for neural tube defect prevention. Thank you for watching this clinical pearl on pediatricnutritionce.org.